Okay, everyone, what I'm going to do now is just work through some of the different answers. You might well know self mark. The key thing to do is just to notice if there's something that you're not sure about or go back to some of those resources and check out what they are. So which part of the action research cycle are we on now? We are on the acting and observing part. So this acting, observing, reflecting part. So the final two parts, we're still in the acting mode. Name some ways to collect data for our project. Observation, surveys, interviews, photos, video, tests. There's loads of different ways that we can accept and gather data from our different strategies. Why is it important to connect to STEM careers and role models? So this was from workshop two with our colleagues from Education Services Australia. When we do this, it encourages girls to consider STEM careers so that they have a good understanding about what they can get involved in. When we connect to careers and we connect to STEM role models, when we show girls those role models, we bring that into the curriculum, it increases motivation and interest. What are impact indicators? So this was something from last time that we talked about. What are impact indicators? The answer was they are signs that the strategy that you're trying is having an impact. So it's a signal to you that something is changing. Impact indicators, it does what it says. It shapes to you there's an impact. And let's have a run through these seven. Remember, this is our starting point for our action research. So becoming more familiar with these is always going to be helpful. So let's have a look at these seven. Create a gender neutral learning environment. We were talking about resources and textbooks and posters, those types of things. Ensure everyone gets hands on. We were talking, I think Ethel was talking last time about microscopes and making sure people, when we're in that experimentation mode, we're all hands on. Design learning to embrace context and problem solving. Connect learning to careers and role models. Engineer collaborative learning. Provide choice and creative opportunities to demonstrate understanding and encourage a growth mindset. Why are micro teaching strategies ideal for action research? They're quick and easy to try out. They take little time, resources, and effort to implement. What can students use a mind map for? We showed you some examples last time. A mind map is useful to organize their thinking and show what they know. So that's something that's going to be helpful for you. That's actually a creative way for them to demonstrate their understanding. So instead of just writing it, they might create a mind map. Name the four parts of our action research cycle. All right. So the four different parts, reflecting, designing, acting, observing. So we reflect on our practice. We design something that will change. We act on that design. We look at what has changed. Okay. Remember that's a cycle. So it keeps going round and round. Name the two different types of data we can collect. So there was two, it's qualitative, which is all about comments and quantitative, which is numbers and so taking data, they're counting things, quantity, quality. 